Right, welcome to part two of this video. This is going to be nice and short, but it's very important that you follow these steps in order to actually make this um, assets or this image that we have now worked so hard to make animatable. All right, so up until this part, um, what I've been having you guys do when creating our layers is we've got one main layer and then typically inside of that main layer is a bunch of sub layers that comprise the various segments of that asset. So if we were to think of the front leg, for example, even though we have one main layer called front leg, you can turn that on and off. Inside of that exist the lines, the shin, thigh and foot. Now, as I've mentioned in class, when we are animating an Adobe Illustrator file, so if I import this file into After Effects, I'm only going to see the main layers. So I would only get the headset, head, front arm, front leg, torso, hair, back arm, back leg, and then the plants and radio. Now that is not going to be very useful when, for example, I want to animate the foot on its own. That would need to be on its own main layer. So this is now an exercise that I'd like to have you all do. And I'll be checking this exercise by um, giving you a quick little animation assignment at the end of this. So what needs to be done is everything that we might want to move, everything that we might want to be able to actually animate needs to be on its own layer. So for example, if I take a look at the various sub layers that we have here, let's actually just start off by taking a look at the headset. The headset's fine as is, that's just a single sort of asset, so we can leave that. The headset doesn't need to be adjusted. For the head, however, we have the path for the scrunchie, we have the head itself, and we have that hair strand. So we need these to be on their own layers. So I'm gonna grab my head layer, I'm gonna create two new main layers, and uh, what we're gonna do is, let's actually just move the scrunchie inside of our head group to begin with. So to do that, I'm just going to extend the head sub layer and I'm going to drag and drop my scrunchie inside of that. So it gets added to that group. Okay. I then need to select this head layer and click and drag it over onto one of my new layers. So that got uh, placed onto that layer 71. I'm gonna call that head. I'm gonna grab my hair strand. I can actually double click to just uh, copy its name and I'm going to click and drag this onto its own layer and just paste it there, hair strand one. And then I can delete my head main layer because we no longer need that. Taking a look at our front arm, we can see this is comprised of two layers. So let's unlock it and make one new layer above it. I'm going to grab my front sleeve and drag and drop that onto the new layer. We'll just call that front sleeve. And uh, we can actually leave the front forearm sub layer sitting inside the front arm because that now just controls that sort of one segment of information. And I'm going to turn off the visibility of my assets as we go so that I can just keep track of where we are. Moving over to the front leg, we need to have at least four main layers for these assets. So I'm going to make three brand new ones. One, two, three. They get added to my list. I'm going to move the front lines, just double click to copy its name, click and drag that onto its own layer and paste its original name. Do the same for the front shin. And then do the same for the front thigh. And we're just going to rename the original layer to front foot there. There we go, we now have the layers that we need for those front leg assets. The torso is one like one large comprised piece, so we can leave the torso as is, the hair the same, they're already on their own layers. Coming over to the back arm, we obviously need a layer for both the back forearm and the sleeve, so we'll just make one new layer here. Double click the name for our back forearm to just copy it and then we'll click and drag that onto its own layer and paste its name. Back sleeve, I'm just gonna rename like so. So now we've got the back forearm and the back sleeve. Coming into the back leg, it's gonna be the same as for the front, so we need three new layers. We're going to take the back lines and place them on their own main layer. 
We're going to take the back shin and do the same. Same for the back thigh. And then we'll just relabel this main layer here to be back foot. All right. Now we come to the plant and the radio. So if we think about our plant on the left here, uh, we obviously want to be able to apply motion to these fronds or these leaves that we have. So we're going to need each of these little paths that we see here to be uh, on their own main layer. So there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine of them. So we're going to make nine new layers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. And I'm going to just move maintaining their sort of layer hierarchy that we had is going to move them all into their own main layers. Obviously, you'll see that as we move them into these new layers, they're appearing above the pot. That's fine. We'll make an adjustment to that in a moment. Okay, so that then just leaves the original main layer with the pot. So I'm going to rename that original layer to pot left. And we're going to make sure that that pot is sitting above all of these leaves that we have here. And I'm going to call this left leaf one. Copy that name and just paste it and adjust the number two, three, four, etc. It's important that we label these layers. The reason why is because when we import them into After Effects, they retain the same layer name that they have in Illustrator. So if you can get your layering done right in the creation process, you don't need to worry about renaming everything when you get into After Effects. All right, so now each of those leaves and the pots are on their own layers. Then we have our radio. Now the only thing that we really want for the radio to be able to animate are the speakers. So these subwoofers that we have here and the antenna, we might do a little something there. So I'm going to make three new main layers. In fact, we're going to need four. And the reason being is we still need this uh, path for the shadow that we have here to sit above the speakers. So that's going to have to be on its own layer as well. So I'm going to move that shadow path onto its own layer and I'm going to call that radio shadow. Just so that I know what it refers to. Can turn its visibility off to make my selections a little bit easier. I'm going to then move the center of the right hand speaker. So I'll place that below the shadow and we're going to call that um, right speaker red. We're then going to move the yellow circle onto the layer below that. So that's going to be right speaker yellow. And that's going to allow us to animate these two circles sort of doing their own thing, scaling and bopping to whatever music we have. We'll then do the same for the red speaker left. So left speaker red. We'll do the same for the yellow, left speaker yellow. And then we're going to make one more new layer. That's going to be the antenna uh, layer. And my antenna is comprised of the bottom three sub layers here. So the two ellipses and this line. I'm going to click and drag all three of those onto my antenna there. And we're just going to adjust the layer stack so that the antenna sits below the radio. Okay, so we still have everything we need, but they're now just moving onto their own layers so that we can animate them. Lastly, we have our final pot plant. And what we're going to do here is just make three new main layers. And we're just going to move each of these leaves onto their own layer. So I'll just call this right leaf one, right leaf two, right leaf three. OK, 
Okay, and then we're going to adjust the layer stack so that those leaves sit below our pot plant. Okay, so we have now labeled uh, the names of all of our layers. And as you can see, we now have a large number of layers in our layer panel here. And that's not all we can do. We're also going to change the color label so that we can at a glance tell immediately what relates to what. So in order to change the color label, you've seen me doing it through the tutorials, but just to give you an idea, you simply need to double click on the thumbnail for a particular layer, and you can then choose a new color by clicking on its color here from the drop down. You can also choose custom if you select custom and choose your own original sort of uh, hex code there. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm going to set the headset to a light blue and I'm going to change the head to a light blue as well. Now, at a glance, I can then tell that these two go together. My hair strand one is another example that would be light blue. Now, what happens when I want to change the label of multiple layers? Going and changing each and every single one of them is a little bit of a pain in the ass. So I'm just going to select my front sleeve. I'm going to hold down shift and select the front arm below it. And rather than double clicking on the thumbnail for that layer, I'm just going to come on over to the hamburger option at the top right corner of our layers tab here. I'm going to click on that and I'm going to select options for selection. And that's going to allow me to change my color. So I'm just going to set those to a light red and those two now have the same code. I'll grab the front lines, holding down shift, I'll click on front foot. So that's all of my front leg layers. Let's go to options for selection and change that to magenta. I'm going to click on torso. This can have its own color. So I'm just going to double click on its thumbnail and I'll change that to, let's just make it black. So the hair in my mind is still related to the head that it would be attached to. So I'm going to give that the same color blue that our head has just so that that label can tell again at a glance that those colors relate. And by the time we're done with relabeling everything, we'll be able to uh, tell them at a moment's glance. So for the back forearm and back sleeve, we're gonna come up and do the option selection here. And you can make these colors whatever you want. I'm just gonna be choosing them at random now. Here are the layers for the back leg, and we'll just set those as teal, I guess. We then have our pot left all the way down to the leaf nine. Let's change the color of this selection here to violet, I guess. Uh, I have all of my radio layers and we'll just color label those. This doesn't appear in After Effects, but it will help you when you're working in Illustrator. The antenna is going to be the same, so that would be that brown color. Plant right, we'll change those selections there. And that is that. We don't have to worry about changing the color label for our references because we don't need to worry about those. Okay, so now at a moment's glance, we can tell what layers relate to what. So essentially what should be touching what when we import them into After Effects. Now, I did mention that I would have a slight assignment or exercise for you guys. So in order to make sure that you've set this up correctly for animation, I'm going to ask that you color code yours the same as mine. You can just pause and make sure that your layers are the same as mine label them, they don't have to be labeled the same, but just so that I can read what they are and color label them. You're going to screenshot that and you're going to provide that to me in a submission for this exercise. It's going to be a little extra exercise for you guys. Okay, but that is that for our Adobe Illustrator course. I'm going to make one more video for you guys covering the typography side that just quickly allows you to experiment with using typography and type in Illustrator and then we'll move forward from there. Thanks very much for watching.